He says, why not? He says, man, there's a fierce witch doctor on that island that rules the people with an iron fist. If you get close to it, they'll come out of their canoes and they'll kill you. He says, I used to try to fish while I'm there. He says, but they chased me off so many times, I want to go back. So the missionary said, well, what if I pay you to take it? He says, well, I'm not going to land on that island. He says, well, just get me close enough that I can swim in. And so the guy finally agreed to let him do that. So he took him and he says, I'll come back for tomorrow at the same time at this place. If you aren't here, I'm not coming on land to find you. You're on your own. <laughs> he says, but I'll come back to pick you up tomorrow. So the missionary swims into the island. Nobody's around. He finds a path and gets into the inner island where there's a village. And it seems a little chaotic, but finally he, he starts talking to them. And, and he says, is there anybody here looking for God? And they said, well, probably the witch doctor's son. Which doctor died and he was supposed to take over, but he said he didn't like doing that stuff and he wanted to find the real God. And he went to the top of the mountain over there and he said he was going to stay there until he found the real God. And so the missionary says, well, where is he? And he said, well, he went up that path. And he climbs the mountain, finds this young man on top of the mountain. And as soon as he started approaching, the young man heard him. He stood up, turned around and says, you're the one who's supposed to tell me about the real God. And he said, yes, I am. And he sat down and shared with him about Jesus. And now he is the minister. The young uh, witch doctor's son is now the minister of that island and that particular group of islands. So that was just an example of how God... But Carl, in that story, there was, the, there was a human being that could pass the story along. Right. I've heard of cultures where they found people that had not been exposed to the outside world for many generations. Right. So are you suggesting that because they they had been exposed to generations, they didn't have enough want for for people to find them and expose them to that? So that's the area that I, I'm not clear in my mind. Okay, I'll that, give you a second example. This is a, a one that's happened in the last 10 years. During the first Iraqi war, um, there was one small village in the mountains that were, you know, you know, got TV reception things. They're confused. They're saying, well, why are these Americans coming to help if... They're the devils, you know. We don't understand. So the oh, imam, that's what the Islamic Islam people taught. And so the imam got together his elders and they started praying. And they said, you know, we want to know the truth. We want to know who the real God is. And so in a vision, an angel appeared to them. And he said, if you'll go down to the highway, he says, I'll bring you the book that will tell you about the real God. In the meantime, a missionary is trying to smuggle some Bibles in Iraqi language into the country. And as he's going down this road, as he tells the story, suddenly his car quits. It just flutters out. And here he's in the middle of nowhere. He doesn't know what to do. So he gets out of the car and he opens the hood and he looks in there. He doesn't see anything wrong, but the car won't start. And he looks over and there's this guy sitting on a rock. And the guy says, are you the one that's brought me the truth about God? And he said, well, I guess I am. <laughs> so he took the Bibles that he was smuggling in and gave them to this guy, and he took them back to his village, and that whole village came to know Jesus. So that was example number two. But in both of those, they had the opportunity for, for some kind I of intervention from, from the outside world. I an angel but the angel came first to get them to the Not contact. Man. So, okay. so is it possible what you're? I'm trying to read into what you're, you're where you're going because I don't want to hold up Ben's plat, you know, and he's got a, a lesson here. But basically, what you're saying is an angel could come to a person and reveal a story through some uh, some outside source other than than a human, so that the person could accept Jesus and be saved. Is that yes. in a nutshell? Okay. Trying to find a way. Okay. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hold your class up. Yeah. Who have 
heard it every day of our lives and have thumbed our nose at it. Now that now I don't believe that we we'll, that we will be not be held to a different standard than those people who have never uh, heard it. But I mean I just I just God is a just God and He is. There, uh, now I just believe that there is a provision and maybe it is that, that these people will will be brought somebody, but there are thousands of people who have who have died and never known. I mean I just I just feel like there are a lot of things that we don't know about. But what, what Janie just said is so true. I mean, the first words out of her mouth, we can't limit God. I mean, once we start doing that, <clears throat> Satan's got a hold of us. Because if he can't do this, he can't do that. And I mean, you know, if, if you believe what you saw in the church this morning, that number, and I don't even remember what that number was, but set of the fives and zeros behind it. You know, if he could create that many stars, can he get to somebody? Yeah, know what that's uh, in this universe. That's just this we, universe. We've read the verses that God doesn't want. He doesn't want anyone. Hey, ben, anyone to real quick. The no. whole Old Testament, the Hebrews chapter 11, about faith. All those people had a faith in God. It's the same thing as everyone else. I mean, they didn't have Christ, and most of them didn't understand the prophecies that led to Christ. I mean, you know, go back to Genesis 3, where God did the... The stuff right there with Abraham. He promised, you know, from well, from the fall of Adam and Eve, you know, her, the hill will stomp on his head. He told you from the very chapter 3 that there was going to be a Christ. But they didn't understand that. They had to have the faith in God, the same kind of faith that we were talking about when we started this discussion. It always goes back. The Old Testament, near the end, might have understood there was a Christ, but they didn't. They still hung him on a cross. They didn't realize he was the Messiah. And so, you know, it's the same thing in the, the rest of those areas. I think we're held at a higher account standard because we've heard about it. Amen. But it's still the same thing. Sin is sin for them just like it is for us. They have to have that faith because that's what Hebrews 11 tells you. All the way it's by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. They understood, they understood. And most of them didn't understand anything about Christ. But they had faith in God. Amen. Amen. So, yep, they believed. Okay, first angel. <laughs> the first angel blew his trumpet, and hail and fire mixed <coughs> with blood were hurled to the earth. So a third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and a third of all the green grass was burned up. You ever heard a story like that before? Plates on Egypt. We read Exodus 9, 18. You can